Hi, this is Sue Jackson of the Book by Book blog, and I'm here with another Friday Reads, my brief weekly update on what I've been reading. I was very excited this week to start my first book for Booktopia. This is an annual event held at the Northshire Bookstore in Manchester, Vermont, the first weekend in May. And it's basically just a super fun, relaxed um, hangout between a group of like eight or so authors and about a hundred readers. It is so much fun. Um, my mom and I usually go every year. Last year was the first year back after the pandemic. Um, so a lot of the same people go every year. We were all thrilled to see each other again, but new people are always welcome and tickets are still available. So I'll include a link down below, um, both to my video from last year's Booktopia and also a link um, to more information. I would love to meet you there. So the way Booktopia works is the Northshire booksellers who have wonderful taste in books, um, select eight authors who have books um, either recently released or releasing this right now in the spring. So um, I try to read as many of them as I can before I get there because the author talks at Booktopia are different than what you normally encounter. Um, like if you just go to a bookstore on a weekend to hear an, an author speak. Um, these are not just readings. Um, they're usually in-depth discussions with the author, with a small group of people. Um, they're more like book group meetings than, um, than your typical author event. So that's a lot of fun. So I like trying to read the books ahead of time. I was lucky enough to get an advanced copy of We Love to Entertain by Sarah Strohmeyer. Um, this is due out on April 25th, so not too far away. It's my first book read for Booktopia, and it is a thriller. So that's a little unusual, but Booktopia doesn't usually do a lot of thrillers. I'm really enjoying this one so far. It actually takes place in Vermont, so very appropriate for Booktopia. It's about a reality TV show, um, a renovation home show, where it's a contest between three different groups of people, pairs, who are each renovating a home for a different reason. So the couple that is focused on in this book is the couple that bought some property in Vermont. Um, there was, they got 40 acres for a very cheap price because the previous owner hadn't kept up on his taxes. So the owner was actually evicted from the property in order for them to, to buy it. But the, the people running the show don't really know that. And, um, and this is all at the beginning. I do not give away spoilers, so you don't have to worry about that. So these, this main couple that we're focused on in this book is Holly and Robert. Robert comes from a very wealthy family. His dad is a real estate developer. This is kind of in his blood. Um, Holly is from Florida, um, kind of Southern girl. She talks about growing up uh, being homeless when she was a teenager. And the two of them are taking this property they got really cheap and building this beautiful, um, eco-friendly mansion on the premises. So each team kind of has a hook and that's theirs, that this is an eco-friendly house to build, to live in. Um, so that's what they're focusing on. So there's, there's a thread here about social media and how they present themselves to the rest of the world. Because like most reality shows, you know, they, they have a better chance of winning the contest if they are well liked by their audience. Um, so there's some of that, you know, what's, what's really happening versus what they show to the world. But fairly early on, Holly and Robert go missing. Or do they? <laughs> so that's kind of the question through most of this book, through much of it. Whether or not Holly and Robert are off on an impromptu honeymoon or whether something more 
dark has happened to them. Um, they have they have an assistant on the show. Her name is Erica. Erica's from the local area, this small town in Vermont. She's 26. She is loving being an executive assistant for the show, and she's doing a great job. And she's the only one that knows at first that they left town because Robert comes by her apartment late at night to swap cars with her. Um, he says they're going up to Quebec and he doesn't want to take his expensive um, Tesla up with him because he can't be sure of charging stations on the way. So Robert and Holly don't show up for a few days and things start to really ramp up. The show producers are getting nervous. Um, there's a lot of pressure on Erica and she doesn't know where they are. Um, so part of the question is what happened to them? Was this something they did on their own or, you know, something else? And um, I'm right at the end right now. I've got, I think I'm at 91%. It took a lot of willpower to turn this off last night and get some sleep. <laughs> I can't wait to finish it today. Um, that's We Love to Entertain by Sarah Strohmeyer. My first book for Booktopia and one that I am very much enjoying. On audio, oh, so We Love to Entertain, of course, is a perfect fit for March Mystery Madness, which I am participating in. I'm also participating in Middle Grade March, and I'm doing that mostly with my audio books. So the audio book that I've been listening to this week is, this is a long title, it's the end of the world and I'm in my bathing suit. <laughs> and that is by Justin Reynolds. So this is a book about a 12 year old boy named Eddie. It's summertime. He's got chores during the summer and he's supposed to be taking care of his own laundry, but he came up with a brilliant idea <laughs> to just wear every piece of clothing he owns until he runs out and that will take him to the halfway point of the summer. Then he'll do all his laundry at once and then he'll be able to take the rest of the summer off. So of course this plan backfires. All that he has left, it's day 40, all that he has left is swim trunks. But that works out fine because today is the day of the big beach bash in his town at the beach and he, it's it's the event all the kids and adults look forward to all year long. He's dressed perfectly in his swim trunks and flip-flops. He can't wait. And then his mom finds out about the whole laundry thing and sees the enormous pile of really gross, <laughs> smelly, dirty laundry that has piled up. She grounds Eddie and says he can't go to the beach bash. He has to stay home and do his laundry. So Eddie's at home, not real happy about this situation. He puts in, he gets through his first load of laundry, he puts in a second load, and then the washer and dryer stop, the lights go out, they've completely lost power. And then he notices he doesn't have any cell service either. So one of his friends comes over, they start, the two of them start looking around town, they found, find a few other kids that aren't at Beach Bash um, and nobody knows what's going on. There's no power, there's no cell service. Um, and this is like kind of a mystery. So I'm already toward the end of the book and that part is just happening, um, but it's mentioned right on the cover, so it's not a spoiler. So I don't know how this is going to turn out, what the cause of this strange power outage was. Eddie did see some strange things in the sky. He thought it was fireworks, but it's the middle of the day and the fireworks aren't usually set off until nighttime. So there's this mystery at the center of it, but it's also just about Eddie. So on audio, at one point I was thinking, this is kind of rambly, you know, Eddie's the narrator and he keeps going off on these tangents. But then I remembered at the very start of the book, Eddie explains that he's got ADHD. Um, and so I think this is a way 
of making that aspect of his personality um, come to life, you know, and it works quite well on audio. So I am enjoying It's the End of the World and I'm in My Bathing Suit by Justin Reynolds, and I can't wait to see what happens next. So that's what I'm reading this week. I would love to hear what you're reading. Let me know in the comments down below and take a moment to like and subscribe if you haven't already.